Welcome to Cross Country Checkup. I'm Rex Murphy. Our topic today is a two part question Should Canada revoke the citizenship of dual citizens who engage in terrorism? Second part In your view, does Canadian citizenship carry with it? behavioral expectations from the immigrant. Do we expect, do we expect patterns of behavior from those who come to join our country? Our number is 1-888-416-8333. That's one, three. And my next guest, uh, and he has been a guest on this program before, uh, for which uh, we were very pleased, is the former Canadian ambassador to Yugoslavia. He's the former head also of the Canadian Immigration Service, 1985-1990. James Bissett has acted also as a consultant to the government on a number of issues related to immigration. I spoke with Ambassador Bissett earlier today. Good afternoon, James Bissett. Good afternoon, Rex. Uh, I'd like your opinion, because of your, your former vocations and avocations, what do you make of this most recent proposal uh, to strip citizens who have dual citizenship if they are perceived and proved to be engaged in acts of terrorism. This is just a straightforward, logical thing? Well, as far as I'm concerned, I am wholeheartedly behind it. I think it's a very sensible move. And, uh, you know, it really just brings our uh, citizenship laws in line with most of the Western European countries and certainly in the United, uh, the United States. The, all of those countries have a provision that uh, would strip citizenship from... Uh, naturalized citizens who get engaged in, you know, actions yeah. of violence against uh, the national interest, uh, as long as it doesn't uh, uh, mean that they will be left stateless. Do you, do you think, and I, I don't know if there's any way of knowing this, but also you have, a, you have some background in some of these areas, is there any way of knowing at all what, what numbers of people might shop for secondary citizenship to give them some guise under which to perform uh, malevolent acts, or are we talking about rare and truly rare exceptions? I think we're talking about rare exceptions, but uh, it's very difficult to, to give an estimate. Part of the Canadian problem, I think, Rex, is that, uh, you know, since 1990, we've, we've brought in roughly 5 million, absolutely more than that, really, wow. 5 million uh, new immigrants. Uh, many of them are coming from countries that we know produce terrorists. And uh, because of the numbers, very few of these people are interviewed or seen by a Canadian visa officer. And only probably about one in ten are given any sort of a security mm -hmm. check, which in many countries is meaningless anyway. So the front-end screening is just not being okay. done. Okay. Can you explain to me, Ambassador, why, again, I, I'm not in the field at all, but why we take such a casual approach to persons who are merging with the nation? Well, it's a very good question. I mean, uh, I think it, you know, it stems back to uh, our, our almost uh, uh, worship of multiculturalism and diversity. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I'm not opposed to either of those concepts, but, uh, you know, it, it does tend occasionally, and it's, you know, been proven by studies that have been conducted, that uh, diversity can mutate into almost colonialism. And it, it creates a lot of uh, uh, divisiveness in a society. I think maybe we've gone a bit too far that way. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, the minister, Kenny, uh, is aware that there's a concern here. And, uh, you know, the new uh, study guide that's given out to a new citizenship applicants is, I think, a good step forward mm -hmm. in, in stressing, again, the responsibilities and the obligations of uh, citizenship. Do you think? Encouraging, yeah. Sorry, sorry to jump sorry. in. Do you well, think encouraging you know uh, people to embrace democratic principles and leave their ancient hatreds behind? Mm -hmm. The problem with that, as I see it, it's, it's it's after they have been here for three or four years. Yeah. It should be done before they come here. I think. Do you That's think? That's not being done. Yeah. Do you think our country, Canada? Do you think our country more than other countries? In, in the same economic status, uh, have made ourselves known to, known to be open to these kind of casual entries. Are we in any way more vulnerable because we have, seemingly have at least, a relaxed attitude on this matter? Well, I think we have, but uh, 
you know, it's hard to say. Uh, I know that in England um, they have taken, stripped the citizenship away from, I think, about nine to ten uh, people who have held dual citizenship but who have, become, uh, you know, been convicted or suspected in some cases of uh, uh, doing violence or terrorist acts against the United States or its allies. In, the, in England, uh, that can be done by uh, the Home Secretary simply saying that it's in the mm-hmm. national interest of England to strip the citizenship. And they've done it, uh, as I say, I know okay. at least nine times, perhaps ten. Um, so I, all, I think a lot of the countries in, in Western Europe uh, and uh, in the United States and Canada are facing the same kind of problem. Okay. Like I wonder, going back to your previous role uh, as ambassador and also head of Canadian immigration, when an event occurs that a, a, a Canadian citizen who enjoys citizenship also in another country, when he he or she is in a different country than ours and commits a terrorist There's act. There's been a few bit, uh, extra what are the repercussions on the rolls here within, this the, within the country. Does the does, have needed does a great Canadian lift. citizenship somehow take a great blow? Does it does it besmear Canada or do people usually say, "Hey, uh, this is the, the the one bad example and it doesn't have any negative reflections on the country of, of citizenship?" No, I, I think it does have repercussions, uh, particularly in the security field. I think the recent example of the Canadians found in Bulgaria and mm-hmm. Algeria uh, to have been involved in terrorist acts makes people a little more cautious and perhaps suspicious about the value of a Canadian passport. And I think it does reflect uh, you know, on, on Canada and it reflects on Canadians. Uh, that's part of the repercussions, I think, of, of being a little too easy, mm-hmm. perhaps, in granting citizenship to people that we really don't know much about. Uh, you know, I think it was a, a bad decision in the <clears throat> in the new uh, Citizenship Act of yeah. 1977 to drop the length of time from five years to three. Three years is simply not long enough, I think, for a newcomer to really yeah. get to know Canada well and, and okay. to embrace our values. Uh, two more points. One, one is a more particular in a certain sense. The, the one major objection that I'm hearing from some critics of this proposal, I'm not sure I quite understand it, but it is that we would be creating two classes of citizens and that it might not be in accord with uh, the statements of the Charter. On the first one in particular there, the classes of citizens, do you see this as creating two classes of citizens? No, I, I certainly don't. I mean, let's, let's face it, there is an inherent difference between a natural-born citizen and a naturalized citizen. Yeah, there is. Uh, Short and simple. The natural-born doesn't have to swear allegiance to Canada or make an oath of uh, following Canadian laws or, or paying allegiance to the Queen. Um, that's taken for granted for natural citizens. So those who take that oath are entering, in a sense, into a, a contract with the country. Yeah. And if they violate that contract, I don't see any problem in in uh, okay. trying to take their citizenship away. But here's it doesn't create a second-class type of citizenship at all. The question, and this is the last one I'll ask you, the question that we've set for the entire program here today, and I, I'll, I'll take you off your expertise and just speak as a citizen. Uh, should Canadian citizenship, the, you know, the, the acceptance of or the offering of Canadianship, should that come with behavioral expectations on the person who's being favoured? Absolutely. What would they Absolutely. be, the urgent? <laughs> I certainly believe that, and, and I think that uh, that's one of the problems we have. It's just it's, we've cheapened the whole concept of citizenship by reducing it to three years. And it goes back, um, perhaps, to the, uh, your earlier question. Mm-hmm. Are we more vulnerable in Canada yeah. as a result of that? And I think perhaps we have. I mean, in the United States, uh, their immigration and naturalization law uh, it, it gives them the power to strip uh, citizenship from a, a natural-born citizen if, indeed, they get engaged in activities you know, against the interests of the United States. I don't think they've ever actually enforced that, mm-hmm. not to my knowledge, but at least it is in their law. Uh, so, I mean, you know, the idea that we are going to take away the citizenship of a dual citizen who perhaps hasn't, you know, been living in Canada for years. Yeah. After all, we have 2.8 million citizens living outside of Canada, and uh, that's a lot of that's a lot of yeah. citizenship. Yes, it is. Yeah. Ambassador, you've helped us in previous programs, and you've helped us here again today, so I'd like to say very much thank you. Well, thank you for having me on, Rick. You're most, most welcome, sir. Take care. Bye-bye. James Bissett is the former Canadian ambassador to Yugoslavia. He's the former head 
of the Canadian Immigration Service, and Mr. Bissett has acted as a consultant to the government on a number of immigration issues. That interview was uh, taped a little earlier, and the gentleman was in Ottawa. Uh, we're discussing uh, some changes, uh, possible changes, rather, to the citizenship of uh, 